All right, well, it's time to again revisit a uh, long-running project, probably one of my most long-running projects, the uh, Bessemer engine here, the six-horse Bessemer. Not only the six-horsepower Bessemer, but the three-kilowatt Imperial Electric Dynamo. I made a video on this back in 2013, April of 2013. So, it's been quite a while since uh, anybody's seen this. And it hasn't come all that far since uh, you guys have seen it last. Those of you that were, or that were watching me then that are still watching me now. If you remember, I had to make a new bearing for it, which I've done. Did that last year. So, mechanical things as far as that go are done, as, as well as turning the shaft down, cleaning the uh, armature shaft up. So, now it's about getting the uh, wiring sorted out and checking to see if this thing will make voltage. So, to start out with, I need to determine how all these leads get connected. What we've got here is two armature leads, two series winding leads, and two shunt winding leads. So using my little handy dandy direct current machinery book, we can uh, use a little bit of deduction and detective work to figure out what we got here. It's not shunt wound, it's not just series wound. It's definitely not separately excited. We know it's compound wound based on the CP right there, compound wound. But there's two types of compound winding, short shunt and long shunt. I believe this is a long shunt unit based upon how the output leads are connected. So it's a little bit difficult to just look at them and figure it out. I actually had to draw myself a little picture here. And a little bit of this is just kind of supposition because things are missing. The field rheostat is missing and you know it's kind of impossible to know exactly how it was connected originally. Let's save my place here. But it looks like we got an output lead here that would go to the load and that's connected to the armature and this doesn't have a tag, but it is the other end of the shunt winding. We got a shunt winding that's not connected to anything, and a series winding that wasn't connected to anything. And then we've got an armature and a series that were tied together. Now this was tied and taped up when I got this unit, so they were never connected to anything out of the generator. So I believe that would be this connection right here, the armature and the series. This connection here would be the armature and the shunt, and then to the output, which is this guy right here. The other end of the shunt, right here, oops, sorry, I believe would have gone to the field rheostat, which would have been in a control cabinet somewhere. And I don't, there's no more splices here, or they're at least, you know, no more where they're tied together like this here or this. Just, there were a few of these old, just wires that actually just broke off, so. The shunt, this originally was on the shunt winding here, went out at some point, and this here went out somewhere, and then this. So I don't know if this would be a lo another load connection. I don't think it would have. It may have come off here. It's hard to say. It doesn't look like it. it. Looks like a different gauge wire in that little hole there than what this is. So. Looking at that, looking at my drawing, I believe it's a long shunt uh, setup. So the only other thing I really need to find, figure out before we connect it up is the uh, field rheostat resistance and capacity. The shunt field measures at about 115 ohms and we've got an output voltage of 125 volts uh, under full load. So it's a little bit over compound, compound of the generator because our no load voltage is only 115 and our full load is 125. So from zero load to three kilowatts, this output voltage should rise 10 volts. 
Now they, they usually did that in the past in situations where the supply, in this case the dynamo, was going to be located a good distance from the load and you would over compound a dynamo to raise its output voltage in, re in response to load in order to make up for voltage drop over a long run of wiring. So if we just do a little bit of Ohm's Law maths uh, we can determine that 115 ohms at 125 volts is a shunt current of about just over one amp. So we don't need a very large field rheostat as far as current capacity goes or wattage dissipation, but as far as resistance go, that's going to be kind of a, kind of a uh, shot in the dark there, just kind of experimenting a little bit. So I've got the brushes, brush holders all taken apart. Um, unfortunately, all of the brush tension springs are broken. And the interesting thing is that these are not steel springs, they're brass. Which I thought they were steel originally. But in in sandblasting them, I sandblasted the brush holders here. Um, and of course with a magnet, they're, they're definitely not magnetic and they appear to be brass. So I thought that was pretty strange. This one here looks fine, but in fact it's got a little crack right here, so it has failed. See it? So, I don't know. This one's failed. All the other, all four of other ones have failed. Some of them have failed in multiple places. So, it's kind of interesting why they would have chosen brass for a spring material. Um, I'm going to have to either come up with some springs that I can modify to work in this application, or I'm going to have to learn how to wind springs. You can see they've all failed the same way, more or less, with that long that long break across the cross section there they haven't really snapped well, they kind of have a long break to them but again it appears to be some pretty nice uh, craftsmanship as most things were back in the day there the, uh, the brush tension arm has a steel sleeve in there where it rides on the pin now I had to drill these pins because they were inserted and then peened on both ends of the brush holder so I had to kind of drill them out a little bit and then drive them through. This is a 3 16 diameter pin so I should be able to just get some 3 16 uh, round stock and then drill two tiny holes and put a tiny cotter pin in each end. I think that's what I'm gonna gonna do for a repair here or replacement I should say. So everything needs cleaned up there yet. Brushes. I think I looked at these before. These are uh, Chap and Spear here, or Spear. So that's an old name in brushes. So I'm told. So they do have a. There's a part number on the one. I think I looked this up before E23. Didn't get anywhere with that, but I got a pretty good uh, carbon brush supplier not too far from me where I can pretty much get almost any brush I need just based on the dimensions and if I bring a sample um, of an old brush they can get me like a, 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 a proper brush that won't damage the commutator you know we don't want anything with too much copper in it that'll really ruin the commutator these appear to be pretty soft so that's the generator work that's going on on that I'll keep you updated on that as far as the engine goes, kind of been uh, toying around in my uh, head here with some different pulley ratios uh, for speed. Uh, I don't want the engine to run too fast because this is going to be a show engine. Um, it, it's got to work, but it, uh, it, it can't be obnoxious to listen to at a show. You definitely don't want to listen to something that's running its brains out. Uh, when you're trying to relax at a show. So rated speed for this is 550 RPM. It's a six horsepower engine. Now that's 550 RPM uh, and it's a two-stroke. So it's gonna be it's gonna be firing quite often uh, if we run it at rated speed. So um, I'd like to run it a bit slower so I'm kind of going back and forth with running the generator off of the flywheel or off of the belt pulley. 
the belt that I have is the perfect width to fit right on the flywheel. As a matter of fact, the belt's sitting on this this engine over here. It's a it's a rubber belt that's um, you know fiber impregnated there. So that should work just fine. But uh, like I said, I've been thinking about uh, I've got these two pulleys here. I was going to use a five inch and a three inch. Um, I think the the five inch gets me at 430 RPM if I uh, engine RPM if I uh, belt drive off of the flywheels and the um, three inch pulley gets me a little bit slower than that if I go off of the belt pulley so yeah I don't know gotta figure it out I want to take this engine out to the cool spring uh, show in June they're featuring oil field engines and uh, power generation, electric power generation. So this would be the best of both worlds because this is a Bessemer. It's a they were an oil field engine company, and it's a set up to run on natural gas. Uh, originally it was. I happened to be able to purchase a fuel uh, liquid fuel mixer for that. Sorry about that. Anyway. So, yeah. I want to get this thing running before June. I want to get it belted up and making electricity. So, we're going to have to push a few projects aside. That means the Caterpillar. Don't everybody get angry. That'll get done. In order to get this thing up and going, i got to do some magneto work. Get it, get it off of the buzz coil. Get it back on magneto like it should be. And a couple other things to dress it up, you know, make a better exhaust system, get some of these uh, little kind of uh, hasty repairs out of the way, like a piece of rubber hose and some hose clamps, got to get that out of there. Maybe redo the cooling system a little bit, make it look a bit uh, more original. So, thanks for watching and keep, keep uh, looking for updates here. This should be a pretty interesting one. I've never really had to kind of, I don't even know what you'd call it, uh, figure out uh, wiring for one of these old dynamos quite this in-depth before. So this should be interesting, a little bit of a learning experience for me. Thanks for watching.